Namaskaram and welcome to the 18th episode of C4C Conversations. I am Kushbu, member of C4C and your host for today's program. The previous episodes of C4C Conversations on 18 December 2021 was on active mobility and livable neighborhoods. Today's C4C Conversations program is on a very interesting topic. It's bamboo, which has been utilized by humans for centuries. In the tropical climate in which it grows, it's widely considered a miracle plant. It's used in decoration, manufacturing, in building, as a food source, etc. We have with us today Sri Punati Sridhar, an IF officer, IFS officer, and also an expert on bamboo, who will enlighten us on the subject. Before we start, I request all attendees to kindly keep your microphones on mute so we can avoid disturbances. After the talk, a few questions will be taken up. You are free to type in your comments, uh, questions in the chat box, along with your full name. Before we start on today's subject, as always, Raj Kumar Dugar, founder and convener of Citizens for Citizens, will give an overview and update of C4C activities since the past C4C Conversations episode a month ago. Over to you, Raj. Thanks, Kushbu. Yellerego Namaskara Mate Suswagata. Citizens for Citizens or C4C is a group of concerned and passionate citizens from across Bengaluru whose aim is to leave our surroundings a little better than we found it. Our focus has been on traffic and public transport afforestation and various civic matters. Let me give you brief updates about the main C4C activities after the last C4C Conversations program about one month ago. A four year long journey came to a happy ending on 21st December 2021, when BMRCL finally completed work on removing the projection of traffic island at Minsk Square near Kaban Park Metro. C4C had been single-handedly raising this obstruction issue with both BMRCL and traffic police. And we thank both the departments for their support and actions in the interests of smooth traffic flow. On 23rd December, C4C organized a training on first aid, CPR, that is cardiopulmonary resuscitation and AED usage, that is automated external defibrillators usage for officials of Southwestern Railways and separately BMRCL officials by the excellent Dr. Dinakar. Both agencies conveyed their happiness with the training. We have urged both agencies to install AEDs at least in a few key stations. On 25th December, we took up the issue of stalled work on Cunningham Crescent Road and Miller Tankbund Road with Shivajinagar MLA Sri Rizwan Arshad. As per his assurance to us, work was resumed on 29th December and completed on 5th Jan. C4C had taken up with BBMP the need for elimination of dark spots on Mount Carmel College Road adjacent to Palace Road, as well as Cunningham Crescent Road along with some spots in Vasantnagar. A total of 29 new poles and street lights were quickly fixed based on our specific request and all the earlier dark spots are now well lit up. On 3rd January this year, C4C's Usha Nandini, putting in a lot of time and effort, came out with C4C's newsletter for the year 2019. She is continuing with this documentation and has uh, shared newsletters for Jan, Feb, March, April, and May, June 2020 also until now. We persuaded BIL management, that is airport management, to write to SWR regarding better train services to airport hall station. We now await action from Southwestern Railways. We reached out to Principal Secretary, Transport Department, Sri Rajendra Kataria, IAS, on 14th Jan and discussed about vehicular noise pollution. Based on our discussions, we have written formally to him regarding the various stakeholders and actions desired to ensure drop in vehicular noise pollution in our city. On our afforestation platform, Koti Vriksha Senya, we have had inspections and discussions with senior Southwestern Railway officials on 6th and 10th January regarding planting trees in their premises behind uh, KSR Bengaluru City Railway Station. This will be finalized soon. Planting at Railway Training Institute opposite to Cantonment Railway Station has been completed. We continue to monitor Namakadu nearby. We are also in talks with railways to use waste polythene 
in their road construction projects and we are happy that they have shown keen interest. As before, C4C also continues to interact closely with all relevant officials of BBMP, Smart City, etc., to ensure timely actions. The much needed and much delayed Bengaluru Suburban Rail project was sanctioned 15 months ago on 21 October 2020. However, to date, no work has started on the ground. Also, the priority of the airport corridor of this project has been lowered against the interests of uh, Bengaluru. On 17 Jan 2022, we started an online petition on change.org slash Bengaluru Suburban Rail Project 2020, demanding for work on airport corridor to start immediately. In five days, this petition has over 1,700 signatories. I am sharing the link in the chat mode. We request all of you to copy the link, go through the petition, sign it and share it widely so that our demand is heard by the concerned authorities soon. Well, this has been a very brief update of the main C4C activities during the last one month. Dhaniwaad, Guru. So, thank you so much, Raj, for the quick update of C4C activities during the past month. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Sri Punati Sridhar, who hails from Hyderabad. After completing his post-graduation in agriculture, plant breeding, and genetics, he joined Indian forest services and put in 36 years of service in forest department of which 34 years were spent in various districts of Karnataka. He headed the Karnataka forest department for over two years before retiring in April 2020. When he was with Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Rural Energy and Development, he initiated community participation for making the nearby Rachin Halli Lake to be well maintained and developed and to make it accessible for public use. From a defecation site, it was transformed into a good lake open for public use. Sri Punati Sridhar headed Jala Samardhana Yojana Sangha, which ensured rejuvenation and use of 3,700 lakes in the state through community participation. Some of his other achievements include as project director, Kalyana Kere, Mavathur Kere, Watershed Development Project, he successfully worked with farmers to develop excellent forest and horticulture plantations, which won the National Productivity Award. He revolutionized the system of arid zone plantations by planting tall seedlings of 6 to 10 feet height in the northern arid districts of Bijapur, Gulbarga, Bidar, Raichur, and which helped him clean the roads and block areas. It was very well acclaimed by one and all. Shri Punati Sridhar as DCF Karwar during 1994 and 1995 uh, in collaboration with DCF Haliyal was instrumental in successfully stopping the traditional illicit felling of 30,000 to 40,000 trees at the Anshi Sharana Vasveshwara temple during Sankranti time, which could not be stopped for decades by the department despite several attempts. During 1995, he helped develop the picturesque and world famous Debag Beach Resort in Karwar, which is now with Jungle Lodges and Resort Limited. In Koppa, he brought the unabated smuggling of sandalwood to a grinding halt. At Chikmaglur, he successfully rehabilitated inhabitants of villages in Bhadra River Tiger Reserve. He succeeded in stopping entry of thousands of cattle into the Tiger Reserves from Lake Avali site. Wherever he worked, he got massive soil and moisture conservation works successfully done. He stopped granting of environment clearance for mining in Western Ghats and won the case in High Court as well. The list of his achievement is indeed long and includes initiation of seed ball program involving school and public, which was carried out on a massive scale in the entire state and which was a grand success. At present, he heads a pan-India NGO Bamboo Society of India and is doing his bit for the bamboo sector. Over to you, Shri Panati Sridhar. Thanks a lot, uh, Kushbu. You have actually, I don't know where from, uh, where all from you have fished out uh, information on my, whatever I have done. Thank you very much. You have given a very detailed uh, info about uh, me. Uh, so nice uh, introducing me to the audience here. Uh, uh, Mr. Rajkumar, uh, my uh, appreciations 
for all the achievements you are making, especially the last one month itself in a small time, within a short period of time, you have done a, I mean, great achievements, which are of great importance and use to the public here in, uh, in, in Bangalore and Karnataka. And uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to, to be with all of you this evening. Uh, I'll be speaking on uh, bamboo and uh, basically its uses. Uh, though uh, one thing I'd like to make uh, clear that uh, though I'm a forester, we were uh, involved uh, mainly with uh, conservation of forests and management of forests, including bamboo areas. So that is basically my expertise or experience and uh, agroforestry we were promoting, but not much. It, it was not picking up that much that time. And uh, uh, then uh, last two years when I was heading the department, uh, uh, the bamboo, National Bamboo Mission for Karnataka was with us, with the forest department. In, in, in many other districts, it's, it's with agriculture department and sometimes with industries department. But fortunately in Karnataka, it was with us. So that is in brief my uh, experience with bamboo and past uh, since April uh, 2021, I've been associated with uh, the Bamboo Society of India, which is a which is an NGO started by forest officers, and uh, way back in 1989. So 88, 89, this was started. And very enthusiastic retired officers, uh, one Mr. Kohli, and many of them have come forward and uh, they have done that. And we have uh, about 1,380 members. And uh, we are striving hard. It's an NGO. It's, we are all volunteering uh, in this uh, organization and trying to promote uh, bamboo and strengthen the bamboo sector and uh, provide whatever by whatever means uh, uh, guidance and assistance to people. Whoever is coming to us, we have a lot of experts. So we are connecting them. Uh, whoever is uh, coming up with queries and some whatever they need pertaining to bamboo, we are connecting them uh, with the experts uh, with us and trying to promote bamboo uh, within the country. And um, basically we believe that uh, bamboo has got tremendous potential. Uh, when uh, China could do it, why not we? We have doubled the area uh, of uh, bamboo plantations and forests put together as compared to China. And uh, uh, but then uh, in the global market, uh, China has a market share of uh, around 70%, whereas we have a market share of around 5%. So that's where we stand. But then that gives uh, uh, as a clear idea of uh, what kind of scope and potential there is for bamboo. And uh, when uh, China has got about 8.8 .8 million people working, especially mainly uh, youth and women, working in the bamboo sector, uh, then we can, we can, we have around about 20 lakhs people working there. So there's a fantastic scope for uh, uh, increasing our share in the global market, as well as uh, uh, providing livelihoods to many, many more. Maybe we can double it or uh, multiply it two or three or four fold uh, with, the, with the basic raw material that we have uh, with us, the resources that we have with us. So uh, about 50 million hectares uh, worldwide, uh, uh, we have bamboo and uh, of which, uh, uh, as I said, India contributes only 5% of the market share. Uh, and then uh, in 2019, it, it, the market share is about 70, 72 billion uh, worldwide. So that's where it is. And... Uh, <clears throat> Whereas uh, if you look at the major exporters, it's uh, major exporter number one is China, second is Thailand, Vietnam is third, US is fourth, and we are nowhere. Whereas among the major importers, we are among the top importers, then followed by uh, United Nations, Netherlands, Spain, etc. So globally, there are about uh, 1,250 uh, species of bamboos. Uh, as I said, about 50 million hectares of land, it is, it's, a, it's, it's millions of people across the world are making a livelihood through bamboo. India is blessed with uh, 48 species and uh, 148 species of bamboo with 29 genera covering about 15.69 million, million hectares of land. Most of the bamboo is distributed in forest areas. Now, looking at the productivity, you see bamboo productivity in India. 
if you see uh, it's very low it is in forest it is 0.3 tons per hectare per year one of the main reasons is that uh, forest department is very conservative about bamboo and uh, most of the bamboo areas here are in wildlife where nothing is removed you can't harvest anything uh, in wildlife areas and uh, so that is one reason why uh, the productivity is low but then in the other uh, in the uh, non forest area non wildlife areas also uh, bamboo extraction is more or less restricted uh, it is not uh, been done uh, as required so that's how the uh, the the yields are low whereas china has got about 1.25 uh, tons per hectare and in private farms uh, uh, when uh, uh, private farms it is 10 tons, 10 tons per hectare per year in india in china it is about 3 tons uh, 39 tons so uh, there's a lot uh, to to be done in, uh, in 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 the bamboo sector in india both in uh, forest mm -hmm. lands as well as in private plantations as i said we have got a, a tremendous potential for bamboo this is uh, the scenario in 2012 whereas the earlier one what i had given you was in 2019 then uh, bamboo is basically a grass so botanically it is a grass it's a very fast growing grass and uh, it's it, it grows like trees the the advantage with is uh, is that it is flexible it is uh, it grows very fast uh, in some of them grow 90 centimeters a day that's how they grow and then the beauty of it is it is uh, renewable every year it keeps giving new culms new bamboo bamboo shoots and bamboos it's very versatile species grows in temperate to tropical regions so sub himalaya and temperate regions up to the tropics hot humid tropics it grows and uh, it is uh, it either clumps or it is as a runner type where the uh, the uh, the rhizomes are uh, running i mean they move around i mean they grow sideways and then there is space between the bamboo culms then uh, it's uh, resilient to climate as i said uh, and then uh, the beauty of it is that uh, uh, if it is destroyed by fire since it is subterranean and underground the rhizomes are underground it comes back if it is destroyed by snow, it comes back. Even due to drought, if it uh, dries, the top portion dries, then again it comes back. Even in flooding for short durations, it can come back. That's the beauty of uh, bamboo. So even if it is destroyed, it, it grows back again. And uh, it's, it, it is uh, used for uh, actually reclaiming degraded lands, getting some returns from degraded lands. Also, some of the species are uh, uh, being grown in saline uh, lands and then they are being reclaimed. Similarly, in submerged areas also, in fact, uh, there's a, a project going on in Karnataka in uh, Bijapur where uh, around 5,000 acres are uh, normally every year inundated during rains due to seepage from Koina and Almati dams and uh, here also planting work is going on by the department. So it is uh, grows rapidly, it regenerates annually. That's it. See, uh, bamboo is a thing which leaves, once you plant it fr from seed origin, it leaves about 35, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, or 100 years, depending on the uh, species. So only the, when it flowers, it dies. Until then, third year onwards, it keeps giving you returns. It keeps giving you new, uh, new bamboo culms or bamboos, and uh, which can be harvested. The peak harvest, uh, it comes to peak harvest by around uh, sixth year onwards. So sixth year onwards, every year you get almost more or less similar yields. Uh, so if it is selectively harvested annually, it, is, it doesn't damage the ecosystem and is, it, it doesn't contribute to deforestation. It's a, it's a cheap resource as compared to wood and uh, substitutes wood to a great extent. Uh, it's suitable for a range of uh, restoration and uh, land use planning uh, needs. So for restoration uh, purposes, it is being used. It adapts to poor soil and climatic conditions. I've already said that. Uh, helps bind soil. Uh, it is unique and uh, effective tool to control erosion. It's very good for controlling erosion. In fact, uh, recently one person was asking me, uh, can it be used as a live uh, check dam, things like that? Yes, it can very well be used uh, for live check dams. Uh, uh, gully checks and uh, uh, in the revamps. Uh, it is very good for step, uh, 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 slope stability. 
and its water hair, uh, holding capacity is 20 to 25 percent more than that of uh, any other tree forest. And it uh, contributes significantly to ecology uh, and uh, it improves wildlife habitats and forest hydrology. Basically, wildlife, uh, most of the elephants, the major food for elephants is uh, uh, bamboo. And uh, when bamboo food is reduced, not available, they're going out, they're staying out and creating man-animal conflict. And uh, we know the pandas only eat bamboo. Uh, it reduces the effect of climate change. It's a fantastic species because uh, it, uh, it releases more oxygen than any other tree. And uh, uh, see, Balkova, Bambusa Balkova, it is estimated that it will produce about 320 kgs of oxygen per year. Uh, then uh, uh, the for carbon sequestration also it is much more uh, uh, it uh, sequesters much more carbon than a regular natural uh, natural other species tree species forest. Balkova can uh, produce uh, sequester about per fifty kgs of CO two per year. So it's a, an excellent species for massive plantations to combat climate change. Then uh, coming to its uh, characteristics for building. It is known as vegetal steel because of its uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the uh, tensile strength, weight by weight of uh, bamboo and steel. If you compare the tensile strength of bamboo is more than that of steel. And so it is leading now Yeah. Uh, anything? Okay. Uh, it is being uh, regularly used uh, for uh, to combat climate change. Uh, it's a uh, sorry, uh, vegetal steel, and it is being it is now uh, being used in uh, construction activities, housing, construction, resorts, etc. As I said, wa water holding capacity is higher. Um, then uh, it's as I said earlier also a fantastic scope for uh, livelihood for the poor, especially the rural poor. It has got over thousand five hundred uses. <clears throat> Major bamboo species in India. Just I am, uh, hello. Yeah, uh, Dendrocalamus strictus is. I'm just uh, briefing on some major. Uh, some bamboo, which are ma major bamboo species in India. Dendrocalamus strictus is a clumping. It clumps uh, thickly. It clumps and uh, compact, uh, and it, it grows six to eighteen meters. 2.5 to 8 centimeters is the diameter. It is it comes up well in dry zones, and it is it is mainly used by medars in bamboo in Bangalore. It is known as medar bamboo. That is the artisans mainly who use it for mats and then for booties and things like that, and the basket making and all. It is also used for constructions and for poles. Then bamboo sub bamboos is another species which is extensively found in the Indian Peninsula, especially where the rainfall is high, it is thorny, it is clumping species. It grows 20 to 30 meters tall, 10 to 18 centimeters is the dia. It grows around uh, 200 mm so, uh, of rainfall. So where it is more rainfall, it comes up well. Uh, it is used for bridges, bridges construction, purely uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, bamboo itself, ladders, it's kind of housing construction purposes, and it is uh, good for paper pulp. Melacona baxifera is another species. It is known as moly or berry, berry bamboo because its fruit is, uh, it's like it's round, it's like a berry and it's eaten. Uh, awesome. it, is, uh, it grows 10 to 25 meters tall, 73 to 70 uh, centimeters is the dia. It comes up in high rainfall zone, 2000 to 3000 3, mm. So it is found mostly in the Northeast India. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it can come between 15 degrees and 38 degrees centigrade. It is a diffuse clump, so it's not compact clump. Uh, so there will be space between the bamboo columns. Uh, mature, when mature, it looks yellowish brown. It is used for housing purpose, weaving, and it's got good medicinal value, especially for respiratory uh, medicine. And uh, it is a super quality, long fiber for paper. And it can give about uh, up to 80, 84 tons per hectare in three years time. So every three years, if you harvest it, it gives you around that uh, once in three years. Bambusa Balkova is a 25 uh, meters, it grows 25 meters tall, six inches is the diameter. It is good for drought areas. It is also good for uh, saline areas. It can give about uh, 40 tons per acre. Uh, it is used for construction, biogas, ethanol, 
etc and then for uh, staking bambusa tulda is the indian timber bamboo it is known as it grows 6 to 20 meters tall 5 to 10 centimeters is the diameter 12200 to 2500 mm rainfall areas it comes 4 degrees to 37 degrees is the temperature uh, uh, range for it it's it's a dense clump uh, it is used for paper scaffolding construction and agarbattis agarbattis it is popular because the internal nodal length is long bambusa newtens is uh, it is a tightly clumped plant again it to 10 to 15 meters tall 5 to 10 centimeters dia 700 700 to 1500 meters uh, altitude it grows uh, and uh, uh, the temperature range is 9 to 32 degrees centigrade 700 to 400 mm rainfall areas so that is a variation even in uh, dry areas it comes and the ph should be 5.5 to 7.5 which is used for housing paper it's good for paper it is uh, for mats and poles and may, there are many other uses i'm just giving the important uses dendrocalamus toxiae is a uh, is 9 meter tall uh, bamboo then 2.5 to 5.8 centimeters dia so it's not very thick it's it, it's solid more or less solid bamboo it comes up in the western coast mainly the karnataka uh, the maharashtra and uh, the kerala coast uh, and up to 1200 uh, meters altitude in the western ghats it is excellent for furniture for lattes for staking purpose for agricultural implements and even for construction activities oaklandra travancorica is known as elephant grass it comes up, it is seen in the western ghats it uh, height is 2 meters to 6 meters 2.5 to 5 centimeters is small girth and small uh, height uh, it comes in undergrowths where uh, there is water stagnation uh, in in the, in the jungles uh, it can, it is seen up to 1500 uh, 500 meters altitude more than 1500 meter rainfall so the rainfall has to be high for this uh, plant otherwise it, it doesn't come up so it, sometimes it is planted along paddy fields as a soil binder it is used for mats baskets it is a it has got super long fiber so it is good very good for the quality paper it is used for fishing rods and similar things then coming to the uses of bamboo i think this is the main focus of my subject today so no part of bamboo plant is wasted shoots are harvested for food it is very palatable if you have tried and if you have eaten and uh, it's very popular across along uh, all, all across the nations then uh, the branches are used for poles main bamboo pole is used for fiber or pulp or charcoal or even ethanol. Uh, then lower trunk is mainly used for construction uh, purposes, for flooring, for engineering bamboo products uh, such as lumber, uh, plywood, bamboo ply, ply boards, or bamboo uh, flooring material. So traditionally, bamboo was using, we all know that uh, it was use, being used for scaffolding, basketry, and in the tribal areas for their uh, huts, construction of their huts. For, few, for music and then musical instruments. We all know that bamboo has been very long been used for, uh, as, uh, for flutes and other musical in instruments. Presently, it is, uh, is being used for furniture, decor, beverages. If you have heard of bamboo beer, it is available also in the market, not perhaps not here, but elsewhere. So it's a popular uh, beer, bamboo beer. Bamboo engineering products, uh, as I said, like uh, it could be lumber, uh, then activated uh, bamboo charcoal. Activated charcoal uh, is excellent. In fact, uh, I will explain later. Uh, it is used, uh, bamboo uh, chemicals are used in uh, cosmetics. Then there are a variety of bamboo chemicals extracted used in medicine and cosmetics and uh, uh, bamboo uh, uh, textiles, bamboo linen is available and it is getting popular. It is uh, uh, comparable with uh, cotton textiles. Uh, it, uh, it is uh, used for uh, as an organic pesticide, as a fungicide. Then, uh, as I said, paper, bamboo ornaments, bamboo toys, bamboo bioplastic granules, replacement for plastic. Uh, bamboo powder is being actually mixed with, uh, like for melamin plates and all, it is mixed with plastic and uh, uh, then the use of plastic is being reduced and then uh, Efforts are on to replace plastic wherever feasible. And it is used in construction, including schools, resorts, hotels, houses, huts. And uh, it's being very, very well uh, used in architecture and interior decoration and interior designing, et cetera, et cetera. 
in, it is also uh, a very good material because of lightweight and it is uh, uh, more safer. So it is uh, used in uh, earthquake areas for housing purposes and coastal areas because it doesn't rust, unlike uh, steel. Of, of late, uh, innovative uses are the, uh, in China, especially it is being used for heavy duty drainage pipes, big ones, and wind turbines also it is being used. Ecology and environment wise, as I had already said, it can combat climate change, it can uh, reclaim, uh, uh, it is used for reclaiming uh, degraded soils, uh, degraded lands, and uh, agroforestry, it is used, uh, it is being uh, grown in agroforestry by farmers and it's catching up because of uh, good returns. Uh, it is uh, it's being used as a live fence. The dry bamboo is also used as a fence. Leaf is a good compost. And uh, looking at agroforestry, actually once you plant uh, uh, and third year onwards, initially initial yields you get and then fifth year onwards, uh, it reaches the peak. And uh, so from there, uh, Every year you get more or less similar uh, returns. And depending on the bamboo, dep depending on the climate, depending on the spacement and all that, the cultural practices uh, you adopt, uh, one can get uh, around, uh, let's say around 30, 40,000, and even it can go up to one lakh per acre per year, 60 year onwards, depending on how you manage. I, I have seen, uh, we have one presentation uh, made by one, uh, Mr. Hegde who's a retired DCF, uh, from coastal Karnataka, and uh, he said he is getting about a lakh rupees from stocks per acre per year. So that's it about uh, plantations and bamboo users. Now, okay. So this is uh, again a pictorial uh, depiction of uh, uses of bamboo. Bamboo as a food, I have already said, uh, it is very popular uh, uh, as a bamboo shoot and. Uh, Many, I mean, it is also pickled. It is used in so many culinaries and especially Ch Chinese hotels, Chinese restaurants. One, one would have a tasted bamboo uh, in Chinese restaurants. It is extensively used. Uh, so this is how, how, how it is harvested, how it is processed and all. Uh, the only the top, the top portion is made use of the, which is, uh, uh, it's like, it will it, it, be like, uh, you can say, uh, coconut, uh, when you cut it and uh, use it. Then these are the various species. Uh, there are about 28 species which we have listed, which are good for uh, as a bamboo shoot, but for growing uh, commercially, uh, Dendrocalamus aster is one which is doing very well. Aster is uh, one of the very good species which where people are planting uh, for uh, commercial production of uh, bamboo shoots. And it's a good industry, it's got good potential. So bamboo in construction, as I said, uh, its tensile strength is much, much stronger. I mean, stronger than, relatively stronger than steel, weight by weight. And then uh, that has been, uh, keeping that in mind, uh, civil engineers have been using it, architects have been, you, have been using it in bamboo in construction activities. You can see they're using it for RCC. So this is a small, I think, uh, it's a probably a toilet, uh, Swachh Bharat mission, which has been, uh, the roof has and uh, been made using bamboo. Then you can see how constructions, uh, how it is used in constructions and uh, uh, different different types of construction. See, this is a five star hotel where it has been done, and uh, one of our uh, Indian company and one of our Indian entrepreneurs has been actually bidding internationally and is able to get contracts and is been. Uh, doing uh, such resorts and five star hotels. So you can see the way it is being used. This is the right on, on both sides of the ply board of bamboo. Then uh, this is one uh, near Bangalore, near Nandi Hills. Just have a look at uh, how architecturally it's an architectural marvel. And uh, yeah, this is another uh, similar structure. This is one more. This is a big auditorium made of bamboo. So that is the potential. Again, this is a restaurant by name Terra and uh, it's full of bamboo. 
So that is the uh, tremendous scope for use of bamboo is one of the guest houses in Hyderabad. Uh, that is a great scope and uh, it's happening, it's picking up. Many architects, in fact, uh, we have a working committee in Bamboo Society of India. So uh, they, have, uh, they are working with Architects Association of India and uh, they are trying to bring in bamboo as one of the, bamboo architecture as one of the uh, subjects in the syllabus. So bamboo split, bamboo is split and then ultimately uh, used. Uh, some of it goes for industries. You can see toothpicks. You can see the chapsticks and all they're made of, out of bamboo. <coughs> and the same splits or chips are uh, further used as uh, for manufacturing of uh, bamboo boards, bamboo plywood, bamboo lumber. Bamboo lumber, see, this one is bamboo lumber. It is uh, as good as... Uh, it's a very good substitute for timber. And one industry, especially in Northeast, is uh, promoting it to a great extent and it is being used. Uh, now, slowly, it is picking up bamboo lumber. So you can cut it to whatever uh, size you need and then use it in uh, construction activities, even for doors, windows, and uh, any other things. And then, then, then there you have the plyboards. Uh, then bamboo, see, this is very interesting. Bamboo has jewelry and artifacts. Uh, it's, it's picking up. There's one lady somewhere in Maharashtra Nagpur and uh, she's been doing this. And slowly bamboo, jewelry is picking up and uh, variety of artifacts. See, there are hangers, uh, things like that. Then uh, bamboo in lifestyle and furniture, variety of... Uh, products, furniture products. Uh, you can see variety of things, cots, then sofa sets, um, reading table, anything, what you name it, it is, the, it is being done, it is being, and they're, they're being, uh, they're getting popular. Oh, I don't know what happened. Okay. So uh, bamboo, it's now of late, it is in news and it is being used for in transportation, basically cycles, bamboo cycles. Then uh, bamboo bicycle is in the form of a, a like a rickshaw or, a, or this thing. And uh, this is a bamboo motorbike with uh, known as Green Falcon. So there's scope for all that. And bamboo as fuels. There's fantastic scope for bamboo as fuels uh, because of it has got a fantastic calorific value. Uh, it is about 4,000 kilocalories. It is about uh, 4,000 kilocalories per kg. And uh, the beauty is the ash content is just less than 1%. Then it is. Uh, it's, it's a bamboo from a bamboo plantation to green energy. So it is uh, used for gasifier, production of gas in a gasifier. Bamboo biomass is uh, pyrolyzed and then made into gas and it is clean. It becomes syngas. Syngas is used for various purposes, including generators for production of electricity. Fuel characteristics of bamboo, see it has got uh, moisture 12 to 15%. Ash content, as I said, is uh, less than 1%. Then volatile matter is uh, 80 to 83 percent. Fixed carbon is 5 to 6 percent. Total sulfur is 0.5 to 0 0.6, 0.06 percent, 0 0.05. Carbon is 48 to 50 percent. Calorific value is 3,600 kilocalories per kg, but net value is 4,050 kilocalories per kg. Bulk density is 0.4 tons per meter cube. Advan uh, advantages of bamboo fuel: it is, as I said, low in ash. It is continuous. You can harvest it every year as long as the life of the bamboo. Uh, 30 to 100 years, depending on the life of the species. It has got low tar, uh, and uh, the cost of cultivation is about rupees 1000 per ton. You can uh, find alternative uses to coal in power projects. In fact, any industry can be used as an alternative to coal. And uh, now, recently, there are some advances, and government is also uh, promoting, especially from the National Bamboo Mission, they are promoting. Uh, bamboo as uh, uh, in, in, in place of coal in power projects. 
then one of the very good bamboo which has got a high calorific value and it's very good for uh, uh, especially for biomass cultivation this is uh, known as uh, bambusa balcoa you can see the difference between uh, how thick is the bamboo uh, stem as compared to wild bamboo bambusa left is bambusa balcoa then you have this uh, gasifier uh, plants see so you have a 5 kg per hour gasifier plant you have a 500 kg, I mean, there are variety of them, just showing you. See, so 5, five kg is one which is mobile. Uh, so you, have, you, you, you get bamboo biogas, then bamboo charcoal. Bamboo charcoal, you can have a bamboo biochar, then you can use uh, uh, activated bamboo charcoal, and then you can also produce nano charcoal. And it is being used in variety of products. Cosmetics is being used. And it's, uh, as I said, uh, compared to uh, the, the best of... Uh, uh, charcoal, activated charcoal that you get from uh, like coconut and other uh, uh, wood, wood species, the adsorbing capacity surface area are much, much higher uh, in bamboo charcoal. And that's how I'm sure in future it will pick up a lot. Its, its demand will increase because of its uh, great physical characteristics. And uh, already you, are, you can see, you must have uh, been seeing uh, bamboo toothpaste, uh, bamboo bamboo toothbrushes are being manufactured uh, in India, in Mumbai and uh, Maharashtra. And uh, so like that, uh, so even the tips, they are using uh, bamboo charcoal for the bristle tips. A uh, lot of cosmetics, it is being used. Then uh, ethanol, see. Now, uh, in fact, our Honorable Minister, uh, uh, Mr. Gadkari, has... Uh, put a lot of emphasis on especially the uh, biofuel industry to produce ethanol. He has shut the targets of six months to one year uh, to establish uh, industries and then uh, make use of and, and take it to uh, 15 billion uh, market. Now, dollar uh, 15 billion market. The scope is fantastic. Once uh, industries come, I'm sure it is going to help the farmers a lot because uh, once uh, the industries are coming up, then they will have to tie up uh, with the nearby farmers and start growing bamboo. We will not advise good uh, forest, I mean, uh, good agriculture lands to be diverted, but then we surely would like to advise them that plant it on the boundaries uh, of farms and plant it in degraded uh, lands so that uh, uh, it's, it's see, uh, you in, if, even if your regular crop fails, this is like an insurance where you will have some annual income. So there's great potential for that. So the bamboo to ethanol is uh, you have to pre-treatment, then you treat it with enzymes, then you ferment it, and then you have then uh, then coming to those are the in broad the uh, uses of bamboo. Now uh, a, a small word about if I have time. I hope I have time uh, about National Bamboo Mission. National Bamboo Mission. Uh, they, there are two phases. The first phase had focused on forest areas and the uh, strengthening the bamboo resources and plantations in forests. The second one started in 2018-19, the focus on plantations outside forest areas and uh, uh, so that uh, people could get more financial benefits and uh, from bamboo resources. Uh, government have recognized bamboo as a grass, not a tree. That is the beauty of it. So because of this, uh, earlier uh, the restrictions in forests, especially need for uh, felling permission to cut trees, bamboos and also need for uh, transportation has been done away with, especially with non-tarni bamboos. In some states, uh, they have lifted uh, 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 the permit for uh, need for a permit or need for uh, filling permission. Some states, the natural bamboo, that's dendrical restrictors and bamboos are bamboos, still you need permission, but rest of them, which normally uh, species which are planted by people are uh, uh, exempted. So one can plant and uh, without any hassles, you cut and transport it. Uh, marketing. Then subsidies for planting, uh, there's a lot of subsidies in uh, up to 50%. And even for industries, for plantations, there's subsidy in national <laughs> And for industries also, there is subsidy. And uh, then uh, if I have time, I will go on to this. What needs to be done to strengthen the bamboo sector uh, in uh, in our country? Kushbu, do you have time? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Please go. I have time. Okay. I'll go ahead with it. Uh, See, we need right policies uh, for investment and uh, which will attract investment. So that's what is required. Uh, we need a full-fledged institution similar to 
they like the fire board or uh, we have the tea board, we have the silk board. So if we have one, then it will be easy to really uh, ensure that the bamboo sector grows in India. Then we need to have an accurate bamboo resource inventory. In fact, Bamboo Society of India is working on it to get bamboo resource inventory. So we, we need to know how many farmers and how much area, what, plant, what species are planted. Then how many industries are there, uh, different industries, what is their demand? Then uh, <clears throat> what is the demand for uh, construction purposes? What is the demand for other uh, purposes? Uh, a, a cosmetics or it could be anything. So we need to have those resources and we, would, we want to link up farmers with uh, traders as well as uh, uh, with, the, with the industrialists. So we are working on that Bamboo Society of India. So that, see, that is when, when uh, it, it is easy for uh, the farmers to market their produce, I'm sure, based on demand, the uh, more and more will come forward to plant. Because after uh, planting second, third year onwards, but for providing water and fertilizer, there's not much uh, uh, needed to for maintenance. Unless there is some uh, rare pest or disease incidents, there's no need to do anything beyond uh, harvesting scientifically and then uh, providing uh, irrigation and then uh, making use of uh, the leaf fall uh, for three to four tons per hectare you get leaf fall per acre and uh, that is you can buy yeah, that, that can be composted and used as a, um, a bio compost so then a lot of coordination is required it's happening uh, through the national bamboo mission uh, and then uh, there's a need to develop a bamboo special economic zones so once you have it then bamboo sector will get a great boost so den zone wise suitable species in fact we are working on it different zones, different species, and not every species comes everywhere. So that needs to be developed and that should be made available along with package of factor practices. Uh, what should be the spacement and all. See, we find that uh, uh, some nursery people, uh, they uh, actually uh, misguide the farmers and they say you grow energy plantations, you grow 1,000 plants per acre, 2,000 plants per, per acre. It's not correct. Uh, scientifically, around... Uh, 200 plants per acre is ideal, but then it varies. If, if, if you are if you are going for uh, like ethanol production, you can have a more denser plantations. But it has to go. One has to go scientifically. My request is not to fall prey to some nursery people who will misguide. And I have seen some farmers being misguided, and then their investments are a waste. To to I mean the additional plantation is a waste, and then the yields are uh, they come down. So we need the package of practice. As I said, we are working, Bamboo Society is working on it. Then you need to have an improved R&D research and uh, development in bamboo. So for which in incentivization is required. See, if there's an incentive, in incentivization for at least 30% 30, 30 or 40% of patent revenue share, then, then this, there is great, there will be great scope. But we have to create such a situation to improve a research uh, R&D. Then incentivize bamboo industry. Already National Bamboo Mission is giving, like when you establish an industry, they are giving 50, 60, 40 percent, depending on the category of industry, they are giving subsidies. But then uh, beyond that, beyond establishment, if they are given a tax holiday uh, for such products so for two to three years, I, we believe that it would also uh, go a long way in helping strengthening the bamboo and uh, uh, attracting entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs to bamboo industry. So it generates over 80% waste and uh, earlier now, like uh, the Agarbati industries uh, where 20% uh, uh, only you get agar Agarbati sticks and rest of it is uh, waste. And then that's how the Agarbati uh, sticks per kg were working out very costly, whereas China is able to make use of uh, the all the waste uh, into uh, different categories, different uh, products and then and then uh, uh, they are able to sell agarbatti sticks at a much much lower price and it has been a great competition uh, our, our uh, to india from china and thailand uh, we have been importing agarbattis only recently government has uh, put in some restrictions by way of taxes and all <coughs> so <clears throat> now i think uh, there is a level ground for the local industry also but then uh, what is what needs to be done is make use of uh, the waste, powder it, and then let it can be used for so many things. Like it can be um, uh, like, like plates, and uh, uh, it can be used for charcoal. It can be used for uh, filling uh, filling purposes in ply boards and variety of uh, uh, 
uh, scopes are there and it, it, it has to be made use of. That is very, very, very much essential. Then uh, we have, as I said, we have to assess uh, of stocks, especially the market and uh, technology research innovation. And uh, uh, then we have to set the standards. Government of India has to do it. I and mean, it's going on, the work is on that. Establishing value chains is very essential. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, there will be a gap, and then uh, the people do not know. Today, in our uh, morning uh, uh, webinar of BSI, one of the uh, participants wanted to know he has grown 10 uh, acres of bamboo in Raichur, and uh, he was asking where to market. So, it is very important that uh, the links between uh, farmers and all the entire value chain linkages are established, which we are trying to do from BSI. Uh, so that it benefits all stakeholders. <coughs> then, of course, uh, enhance, uh, encourage bamboo technology innovations. <coughs> then, uh, of course, uh, national building building code has been and is being modified. A lot, a uh, lot has been done in that in that direction. We have uh, uh, bamboo uh, been brought in into the national bamboo code. <coughs> then we have to set standards, like, and then certification process. Also, we need to set standards for that. And uh, government uh, should list uh, bamboo products in government procurement specifications so that bamboo is also procured and made use of. Then subsidies and uh, especially to ancillary industry should be provided so that the bamboo waste is made use of. <coughs> Proper appropriate uh, uh, investment is required and support from uh, government as well as from uh, financial institutions is required. And we have to include this in uh, National Climate Change Mitigation and Adaptation Plan, which is fantastic. As I said, it uh, <clears throat> sequesters much, much more carbon dioxide as compared to regular trees and natural forests or regular plantations. So it has got great potential for actually growing in the <clears throat> degraded uh, areas uh, for sequestering carbon dioxide <clears throat> in addition to providing some uh, uh, returns. Then collect information, make available inventory. As I said, all that, this is that the inventory has to be collected and made use of to all stay provided to all stakeholders so that there is exchange of information and trading happens. Now, uh, that's it. Uh, then uh, this is one bamboo music one can listen to. Uh, made out of uh, music made out of bamboo. Instrument. Uh, from my end, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Pulati Shrita, sir. Yes. Bab never meant all this to me until today. Uh, this is a whole new world altogether. At this stage, uh, I'm sure uh, we have questions which have already come in the chat box. I'll try to read a uh, couple of them. So the first question was about edible species. I think sir has already covered that in the presentation. If the slide was. Uh, I will answer almost all species grown are edible. Palatability and uh, is, is the difference. That's all. As I said, Asper is quite popular. Mm -hmm. That people growing it uh, commercially and then exporting it as well. There is one question uh, specific to Jharkhand has come, sir. She's asking, uh, Sunil, sir, is asking that which is uh, a good, which are the good varieties for cultivation in Jharkhand? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 can, I can, I mean, uh, I, I would uh, be happy if we can contact me. Uh, then I will uh, uh, connect him to some of our experts uh, because for Jharkhand, I, I don't have much idea. Uh, I, as I understand, Newtons and Tulda and even Balkova should come. But then uh, it's better that uh, experts actually advise him. Kumari is asking a very interesting question. She said that... Um, I participated in the new in ideation national level competition. I propose an idea about bamboo bottles as a substitute of plastic bottles. But they said bamboo smells and thus it couldn't be sold. My question is, how can we commercialize bamboo products? Yeah, basically, see, once they become popular, then and then of course we have to actually uh, do a lot of campaigning and uh, awareness creation with regards to. Uh, replacing uh, so many plastic items with bamboo. Uh, coming to this uh, bamboo bottles uh, issue, more than uh, 
the uh, the, the uh, smell and all that uh, the issue is that uh, the, the problem is it is cracking so uh, people have tried and all but its longevity not not uh, uh, doesn't uh, last long enough and uh, there is cracking so research has to get into this once that issue is tackled then the other issues can be tackled chikanna is asking we are interested in interested in knowing bamboo feasibility for soil erosion control in arid region with annual rainfall rainfall less than 30 m 30 mm soil type is black cotton soil sir scope is for uh, basically in the such a dry zone without if there is no irrigation then it is dendrochloma strictus which can be tried there is scope for dendrochloma strictus yes. uh there are three questions uh, again uh, sangeet sir is asking how to obtain bamboo seeds for setting up sapling nurseries yeah please contact us we will connect to the right person i have given my i have already shared my number i suppose yeah i have shared it in the chat box so sir one can and contact any dialogue sure uh, uh, yeah, one, more, one more thing uh, coming to bamboo na when 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 bamboo flowers then only you get uh, the seed of course in different parts of the country especially dendrochloma strictus and uh, bamboo sir bamboos they are flowering at different times so more or less regularly seeds are available now we, uh, recently we have come to know tulda uh, which is the north north east species in north east areas now it is flowering so there will be bamboo seed available shortly but uh, bamboo seed viability is very low one to two months so one should get it and then one should sow it immediately in beds then later one uh, the one uh, once it uh, forms some uh, rhizomes small rhizome then it can be transplanted into beds second question is any directive uh, directory of na nationwide bamboo nurseries that's as i said now i was uh, we were we are working on inventory and we are trying to do that but then, then there are some nursery lists you find in the uh, uh, in the web as well india if you try now there are some are available but we are trying to uh, gather all the information and uh, provide it on our website it is taking time we are gathering that information thank you sir third last question is what are the uses of uh, activated bamboo bio char that's what he is it is activated charcoal mm -hmm. uh, so there are variety of uses uh, basically it is a uh, it's a great absorbent so you want to clear uh, it it is used in the water filters that is a maybe a nano charcoal and activated charcoal are used in water filters then uh, for absorbing uh, odor in your uh, house is also you are getting some small bags they say keep it in your bathroom keep it in your bedroom any odors are absorbed by them then apart from that lot of cosmetics variety of uses it is i have already said that it is now yes, in, yes. In, even in your toothpaste so the, the uses are very many Sandhya ji is asking that what are the challenges a bamboo farmer faces while cultivating bamboo? She is asking what are the common diseases and pests that can affect a bamboo species? Very few come, very few diseases and pests. Uh, no, I think I have to also refer <laughs> to say what. But uh, basically, from our experience and from our feedback, not much uh, disease and pest management issues. Not much. If something happens immediately, one has to. Uh, control it by whatever means, but then that's not a major issue. Thank you, so sir. challenges, as I said, are uh, right species in right place. So you should know the what is your uh, adaptive conditions, what are the soil, what is the climate, so whether a particular species comes or not. What should be the spacement? See uh, the yield, highest yields you get at an uh, uh, optimum spacement. Spacement. you make it closer you get lesser yield you make it farther you, you get it's basic agriculture principle so there are prescriptions in agriculture for various species whether it is articulate plants or even even for paddy it says okay 10 10 cm by 15 something there is some spacement likewise for bamboo also different species and different zone wise the spacements vary so it's better to, uh, to uh, follow the package of practices one one needs to for cultivation but uh, a caution to all please before you spend money on agriculture especially bamboo farming please look into uh, 
the markets. If you are sure there is a sure market, then only venture into this. Like how you mentioned the challenges, sir, in the slide. One, the next question is related to that. Mohammed sir is asking: Is it possible for BSI to prepare a catalog where equipment suppliers required for various businesses in bamboo can be enlisted? I think it's a good suggestion. We not thought of it, but we know some uh, uh, of of them who are actually manufacturing equipment. Some of the industries who are manufacturing bamboo machines and all. Uh, but then we can make a catalog. We can. That's a good idea. In fact, I'll note it down. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Sunil sir is asking for bamboo processing. Information on top makes and model of processing machines will be very helpful. Yeah, uh, please contact me. See, I'm not an expert in bamboo processing. So mm -hmm. I've seen it, no doubt, but then definitely I'm not an expert. Uh, so please contact uh, me. I've given my shared my number. I will put you to the right persons in Bamboo Society of India. Sufia is asking, sir, you mentioned that one of the innovative uses of bamboo is in the form of heavy duty drainage pipes. Could you please uh, elaborate on this? Recently, I've come across uh, the news, especially China is uh, kindly Google, you uh, search in the web, you'll find that very big size uh, uh, drainage pipes are uh, being manufactured and used uh, by China, which means that they are able to treat it properly to ensure that it doesn't deteriorate. As we are. Basically, it's an organic material. So they would have mastered that uh, the processing to ensure longevity. So oh. it's an information which I've taken from the net and it is a recent development. So one can uh, get into, one can uh, browse the net. On that. Thank you, sir. So Somnath ji is asking that uh, he's from Andhra Pradesh and he wants to grow uh, bamboo for construction purpose. My land beneath two feet is limestone. Top soil is black cotton and our is uh, dry land. Our temperature is from 28 degree to 45 degrees. Yeah, uh, basically you need uh, irrigation. Without irrigation, you can't grow. Point one. Point two, there's limestone. That means I doubt if there is a water uh, percolating down. If it is not percolating, uh, then uh, uh, then there will be salinity as well. Uh, anyway, uh, bamboo bulk over should come up well, but provided you have water. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dendrocalamus comes up, dendrocalamus and bamboo sub bamboos, provided you have water. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Prabhakar is asking which species are suitable for gardens, height of around 20 feet, both yellow and green. Bamboo sub vulgaris is good, and uh, there are some other species uh, which are used for uh, basically for uh, uh, the uh, boundary, uh, for a fence and all that. But uh, ornamental is Bambusa vulgaris, yellow bamboo. There you have a green bamboo, you have yellow bamboo in vulgaris, so the yellow ones is. Thank you, sir. Kishoji is asking, can we replace bamboo pipes for drinking water, uh, replacing PVC pipes? I don't think we have that kind of technology here, so we have to copy it from China. We have to smuggle it and get it and then <laughs> use it here. But I'm sure there'll be time uh, when uh, I think there'll be an alternative. I mean, we Punit, can... Uh, Punit, sir, uh, for your information, there are already tribals are using, uh, uh, you know, using pipes. As that, pipe. time, uh, that is uh, temporary, na? Uh, one yeah. year, two years, and then uh, they'll have to replace. That is there. We have, uh, in our own jungles, we have seen them using. So that is there. That's, it is uh, for uh, regular use, replacing plastic. So it will take time. We don't have the technology. It is happening, but then uh, now we'll have to take a leaf, get the technology from China because they have successfully done it for drainage pipes. Yes. So Chikanna ji is asking again, we are interested in no bamboo feasibility for soil erosion control in arid region, Bellari district, Karnataka with annual rainfall less than 30 mm. Soil yes. type, black cotton. So I think we have taken it. And the dendrocalamus strictest, yes. Yes, we have taken that is the one which comes yeah. up there if you do not irrigate. So do some soil conservation, moisture conservation activities so, so that rainfall received is uh, conserved, then it will help the plant to grow. Thank you, sir. Sinduji is asking how is that Chinese bamboo doesn't crack, especially in the use of water pipes? 
No, no. See, it's not that they they would have processed it and then then they have uh, treated it and I don't know exactly what they did. But then <laughs> any bamboo, only once you have the technology, you can use any of the bamboos for that purpose. Uh, so. I think questions are over, sir. Um, so, but if anybody would like to ask uh, live now, yes. you can just raise your hand or unmute yourself. Go ahead, please. Uh, Puneet, sir. Uh, uh, I from uh, i have asked to bamboo society of india uh, the iso standards which is you know uh, with, uh, to bring up the iso standard where our people to market our bamboo international level so who uh, where to get a certify who can you know test the quality of the bamboo what we cultivate or produce the product that clarity is you know uh, it's uh, we don't have that clarity if uh, bamboo society of india you know come up and give the clarity of what are the things to achieve those iso standards it will be much helpful so i'm looking forward on that sir thank you we we'll work on it we are already working on it it take us time but we will work on it thank you thanks for the suggestion you, but standards are to be laid down by government of india yeah anybody thank else you, uh, would like to ask a question yeah, Ajay, go ahead, unmute yourself. So, uh, I I hear this as as a fiber or as the, we convert this into cloth, and it is being used for sportswear, and it is uh, much better than cotton any day they say, because it absorbs a lot of uh, your sweat, and it's uh, very good for the skin. Yes. Sir. So I think so. This is one industry where it has got a lot of potential where people can manufacture sportswear. Uh, yeah. uh, which will help, uh, I think so, the industry or the people who are growing it. Yes, sir, you are right. You are absolutely right. And uh, actually, that, that's what I, in the presentation, I said some of the species have got very long fiber. And uh, it, it, uh, that, that's how it is, uh, uh, is being used for a special uh, kind of paper production. Then uh, for linen also, it is... Uh, very, I mean, we are importing pulp and then it is being, linen has been manufactured in some portions of India. But we'll, we will have to actually tie up with those industries and uh, uh, tie up, uh, say pulp industry needs to come up and then uh, then they have, they have to, they have to be tied up with the farmers so that uh, we will substitute import with our own local pulp. And uh, the scope is good and uh, the characteristics, as I said, uh, bamboo characters, fiber characters are better. Like uh, nano charcoal, its characteristics are better. Here, even with regards to fiber, its characteristics are better, as I understand. So, so the fact that people have become very health conscious, uh, I think so this is the right way to go to start manufacturing. I mean, whatever uh, is needed to set up industries to manufacture sportswear. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's, that's what I feel. I agree with you, yes. Uh, and then people will buy, even though it will be more expensive, but then when they understand the health benefits of wearing uh, sportswear uh, manufactured from bamboo, they wouldn't mind paying a slightly higher cost also. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Actually, BSI is trying to uh, get in touch with uh, Gokak. There is one who are producing linen, linen by importing uh, in Karnataka, uh, importing pulp. So we wanted, we are trying to get in touch with them and see in, in what way pulp can be produced locally because already they are producing cloth. So we'll we'll work on it. See, slowly it has to be one. Once the demand increases from public, once awareness is there about its positive. Uh, the way it is superior to cotton, then it will pick up. Yeah. Sindhu, things will trickle down to farmers up to farmers. Yeah, Sindhu, go ahead. Thank um, you. Um, good evening. You know, the person who suggested the use of bamboo as water bottles, um, I thought that was just an amazing suggestion and an amazing idea. But you did say that the, there's no longevity because it cracks. But if you, uh, I mean, but Today, in today's world, plastic is like most of the soft drink beverages and almost everything which uses plastic, it's a one-time use. And then it's just discarded to landfill. So what if bamboo cracks? I mean, I'm sure it'll last that one time. And then even if it's dumped, it's a natural, um, it's natural as compared to plastic being dumped in a landfill. 
So can I, we not I, actually work on this uh, idea? I, I, I agree. Actually, bamboo bottles are available in the market. Bamboo bottles are available in the market. It has to pick up. When we discussed about this, why it is not picking up, the feedback we got was that they crack. Ultimately, it's the public. Na? Public uh, probably want more longevity for the bottle. And uh, 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 see, if you compare with a plastic bottle, fine. It is, it is costlier than a plastic bottle. If you compare with uh, other steel uh, bottles and all, maybe it is, it's, it's on par. But then the longevity of steel bottle is longer as compared to bamboo bottle. But sir, inner surface is more susceptible to fungus also, sir. If the bottle is inside, like if you see, and if the... Because it's a live plant, it has to be treated, I think, before making that. It is treated. It is treated. These yeah. bamboo bottles which are available in the market are, are treated, but slowly, see, it is a, a, there is moisture, even if you dry it to the fullest extent, there will be still some moisture coming out subsequently, later date, and you're putting in water, so there's further expansion and contraction, and then that is causing cracks. That's it. And that, that aspect is taken care of. The safety of water, and uh, uh, so that uh, there is no uh, infection from inside, contamination from inside that is being taken care of. They are available in the market. You please Google, bump, bump, bump bottles are available, but they are not picked up so much. So this, when we had a discussion, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm repeating it. So we, it's as per our feedback, that's what I said, that basically the problem is with cracking. And as we start using it more and more, the price will drop. <laughs> yeah. And and the production Sangeet, in Sangeet has some questions. Sangeet, unmute yourself. Sangeet Parvatam. Yes, uh, I hope you can hear me. This is Sangeet yes. here. Uh, my question, you made a very interesting point, sir, that before we venture into farming, we should ensure that the market linkages are there. I mean, what would be the approach you suggest to do this market research and uh, figure out uh, where the nearest market is? Uh, is there any guidance available from uh, Bamboo Society of India or any literature available on this uh, on the internet? Uh, as I said, now we are uh, building up the inventory. We will make it available on, on our website. Industries, what is their requirement? And uh, nurseries, then uh, traders, what is their uh, requirement? And things like that. So, so that there is a link. In fact, right now, what we are trying to do is that uh, we are trying to put people, I mean, basically the members in a telegram group, already we have we could, uh, uh, there are about 350 members in the group. And then uh, there's a farmer is saying, he's saying that uh, this is the quantity of bamboo available. And if, if there's a trader or industry, we are trying to create those that kind of linkages. So when you are starting off, uh, it's better to also locally see whether uh, what kind of uh, demand would be there for bamboo and then only grow it. Uh, there, there are in Andhra Pradesh, I've seen come across some farmers who have done uh, uh, close planting, high density, and uh, then there were no takers. And off late, they are able to market it uh, like uh, from part of Prakasham district to Raichur side, uh, where it is being used for mainly for uh, uh, it is Bulkova species and it is being mainly used for uh, stakes in uh, uh, pomegranate plantations. Sometimes it is takes in uh, different plantations, even bamboo plant, uh, sorry, in, in uh, 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 this thing, plantain, plantain plantation, banana plantation. So it's like that. So uh, it, it looks very attractive, returns are very attractive, but unless you are able to market it, then uh, you see, if, if you have more and there's, there's no demand, then the value comes down. That we are saying, what I am trying to do is a caution. See, there are people who call me, sir, he said, sir, I'll do 300 acres. So I said, no, be sure about the market. Then they'll say energy plantations, I'm told you can do it, there will be big demand. Then what's happening to those who are planted and then were not able to sell? So let right. us keep that. If, if ethanol industry comes in, excellent. There's a biogas gasifier plant, excellent. Sure. <laughs> bamboo, charcoal, bamboo charcoal and all, no, it happens in a... Uh, smaller uh, uh, activated charcoal, nano charcoal, and all happening in smaller uh, industries and smaller level. Right. Yeah. Sir, in that, uh, if we take up large scale um, uh, bamboo cultivation, uh, have there been any, any instances where we can uh, generate carbon credits because it sequesters quite a lot of carbon dioxide? 
yes sir yes, yes. yes, opinion in yeah bamboo uh, instances have no idea then some companies some ngos have also contacted us so we are working on that as well there is tremendous scope this scope excellent scope that's very encouraging thank you so much yeah sir if you if there's nobody else i have a few questions based on your uh, presentation yeah, yeah. uh you mentioned about edible bamboo uh is there any uh, information you have about the nutritional value of uh, bamboo in terms of what it has for us uh i have not gone into that okay, okay. i look at i look i look more at the palatability of it huh. because it's not uh, extensively used na huh? so huh. it is it, it adds taste uh, to the culinary so i i was looking at it but yeah. uh, somewhere i've read i don't remember it has got all the basic uh, uh, micronutrients okay okay Okay. and uh, you have uh, talked about bamboo bicycle now uh, uh, the previous program c4c conversations program was on the bicycle we had the bicycle mayor of bangalore uh, talking to us on active mobility so uh, what would be a range of cost of a bamboo bicycle i'm sorry i have no idea no idea no idea i i have seen have one uh, yeah i have seen one bamboo bike then then were that some of them manufacturing but i didn't get into those details yeah uh, very interesting i have seen a bamboo bicycle which was uh, gifted by netherlands to bangalore and this bamboo bicycle is in uh, professor ashish verma's uh, office and uh, okay. he uses it in iic and uh, for it commercial some are, yeah yeah some yeah. are manufacturing locally yeah so we'd in like India. to know what is the cost so if there is if you can put up that information on your website later it will be will do helpful. yeah sir for uh, for commercial viability let's say in south india whichever species you think is right what would be the minimum planting area i know it's a very generalized question but i don't know uh, uh, see you plant one acre and you uh, you get 50000 rupees per uh, acre per year 60 year, year onwards 40000 or whatever it is or even more it could be one acre as well so uh, i am uh, talking in terms of farmers and uh, i would suggest that uh, we should not divert uh, uh, food producing areas for yes yes other timber purpose and other purposes so i would suggest that have more on the we are trying to have bamboo clusters and uh, fpos are also we are trying to promote and where we are telling farmers that plant on the buns hmm. basically and if you have some uh, degraded areas then plant total whole area it depends if, if you have 10 acres uh, can take average 40 to 50000 per acre if okay. provided there is good market that's it last one or two questions i think harpal singh has raised his hand harpal please uh, unmute yourself harpal singh grewal hello am i audible yes namaste uh, apal i'm all right sir i'm yeah, all right you yeah. see uh, my question is about uh, uh, north india which are the suitable varieties uh, uh, to be uh, sown in north india i um, mean especially punjab haryana and neighboring states and uh, um, i mean what sort of subsidies government is providing this side of india you have any knowledge about uh, newtons does well in north india basically and uh, subsidies is national bamboo mission is giving you subsidies we will one has to approach national bamboo mission uh -huh. for planting and uh, uh, apply for subsidies can you give me uh, the link uh, for the uh, national bamboo mission yeah i'll I'm give trying. you it is Somehow. available otherwise we'll we'll provide I That'll think we have nice. written it on our website as well. Uh, we have a mind to uh, uh, plant bamboo in all the you see uh, barren areas, uh, yes. like yeah. uh, some water logging areas, some hilly areas, you know. And uh, we would like to use it for the energy as well as uh, biochar. Yes, yes, yeah. You have you have told me earlier. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, what, but the total information, the proper information is not available as well as the nursery. okay um, yeah. we will uh, i i will put uh, the right persons on this job and they will please do that you. because the time of sowing uh, is coming february onwards okay. so i would like to have this knowledge if we can have it we can start it 
okay harpal ji we'll, we'll i'll I'll, I'll i'll inform i mean some of us will contact you yeah ram has uh, shared in the chat mode after my question one cup 155 grams of cooked bamboo shoots contains uh, calories 64 protein 2.5 grams fat 4.5 grams carbs 5 grams fiber 2 grams copper 19% of uh, daily value vitamin b6 14% vitamin e 9% k 3% riboflavin so a good list 3% i mean 3% phosphorus potassium i am <laughs> thank you for this uh, information thank you thank you sir i have one question the bamboo lucky bamboo which we see is it is it also a type of bamboo or is it a hybrid version of bamboo sir it is not it is not bamboo it's, it's not, not bamboo, bamboo. At all. So lucky bamboo is a different species. Yeah, grassina species is a different species, not bamboo. Grassina. Ah, I see. Okay, if there are no more questions, I think uh, Mr. Punati Shridhar has spent a lot of time with us today. I don't know. Uh, thank you. May I much. just say one thing, Raj? Raj, just one yeah, point. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say it's not a question, but I just wanted to say that the new terminal uh, that's opening up in Bangalore at the Bangalore International Airport, the new terminal, the entire structure is of bamboo. Um. and although the bamboo is imported from um china uh it's not our local bamboo and it has a metal reinforcement inside and then it's clad with bamboo so it appears like bamboo but but the look is amazing uh just just putting it out there <laughs> yeah good good in fact thank you uh, thank you since i am also not aware of it i am thank you thank for the information yeah in fact uh, we were talking to the bil top management last week they are using sir 6% of their uh, aggregate 6% of that they are using low cost waste uh, polythene also in their roads all the roads in uh, at the airport are with uh, 6% of uh, polythene so they are doing some work good work and leading us in the right direction let's see how it goes any other question from anyone otherwise we'll call it a day punit uh, sir uh, it was a awesome presentation i think you open a lot of you know uh, people's mind and uh, people got into uh, you know very uh, uh, excited and then so i know you kept a lawyer hand you know more information i think uh-huh. you want <laughs> us to find lot of information because i have seen lot of meeting with you know you you are speaking all you know all these things more detail uh, apart from that in all other meetings i think you are keeping the lawyer hand to keep the people to search <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> thank you thank so, you this has been a very interesting journey to the world of bamboo indeed it's time to grow more bamboo and also uh, you know think out of the box to make innovative usage of this grass like how sir told us we have all learned a lot about bamboo from sir and on behalf of myself all c4c members and all attendees of this program i heartily thank shri punati shridhar sir who re- readily agreed when c4c approached him to this to this program for us i also thank all of you the participants for having made this uh, useful program by attending and for your questions and comments all of us also need to spread the word around about the learnings from today's session so thank you so much one and all stay safe stay healthy see you see you in the next episode of c4c conversation so thank you so much thank you very much dhanyawadagalu thank you thank you sir thank you thank you